In this video, we continue to explore the history of the Colosseum, spanning the Renaissance and Baroque periods, marked by systematic plundering by the popes, up to the 19th century restorations and its present day status. In 1349, an earthquake brought down the entire southern half of the Colosseum, two out of three rings of the Colosseum circuit wall, forming a colossal heap of rubble. Over the next four centuries, this heap, along with other materials obtained by demol demolishing the structures, built half of the churches and palaces of Renaissance and Baroque Rome. In 1452, during the papacy of Nicholas V, a single contractor, Mastro Giovanni di Foglia, transported more than 2,500 carts of stone in a year from the Colosseum to the new construction sites of Renaissance Rome. Among these were the new Basilica of St. Peter, initiated by Julius II in 1506. Palazzo Venezia and the Basilica of San Marco, the Cancelleria Palace, Palazzo Farnese, the Senatorial Palace and the Conservatory Palace on the Capitoline Hill. Additionally, in 1634, the powerful Barberini family and Pope Urban VIII used the Colosseum stones for the construction of St. Peter's Basilica and the Barberini Palace. And in 1703, after another earthquake caused a part of the surviving third ring on the south side to collapse, more Travertino was taken for the steps of the Ripetta port on the right bank of the Tiber, unfortunately demolished at the end of the 19th century for the construction of the Tiber embankments. After all these centuries of earthquakes and plundering by the popes, it might seem surprising that the north side of the Colosseum is still largely intact. The reason so much remains is that part of the building was protected. As mentioned in the previous video, the north side of the Colosseum was always less susceptible to earthquake damage. Additionally, the north side of the Colosseum facade the processional route connecting the papal residences, the Laterano and the Vaticano, the Via Papalis named. It seems that the popes deliberately preserved this part of the Colosseum as a monumental backdrop for their processions. Not all popes agreed. Even in the 16th century, Pius V proposed demolishing the remains of the arena. However, fortunately, most pontiffs insisted on preserving this fragment of the Rome's greatest ancient building, especially during the Jubilee of 1675, when the Colosseum took on the character of a sacred place in memory of the many Christian martyrs condemned to martyrdom here. In 1744, Pope Benedict XIV ordered an end of the plundering with an edict and had the 14 stations of the cross built, and in 1749 declared the Colosseum a church consecrated to Christ and the Christian martyrs. There had even been a grand project to build a church in the Colosseum's arena, promoted first by Pope Innocenzo XI and Bernini architect, and then by Clemente XI on a design by the architect Carlo Fontana. This project was then shelved due to the lack of economic resources and 1703 earthquake. Previously, Pope Sixtus V had imagined transforming the Colosseum into a factory for the textile industry, with workers' housing to be accommodated within the Colosseum structures. In the Renaissance, artists and architects began to study and represent the Colosseum. In Andrea Mantegna's Oration in the Garden, from 1455, at the National Gallery in London, you can see in the background an imaginary Jerusalem with the bell tower of St. Mark's in Venice, the Colosseum and the Trigem's Column. Countless representations in painting 
have followed since then, until the advent of photography in the 19th century. Coming soon, I will make a video dedicated to the representations of the Colosseum over the millennia from Roman coins to the Romantic painting of 19th centuries. In the early 19th century, the Colosseum was structurally compromised after centuries of inhabitation serving as a place of Christian worship and being used as a quarry for Travertino. One of the main and most evident problems was the abrupt interruption of the outer ring of two sides. Under Pope Pius VII, the first restoration works began after 1806, the year when a violent earthquake compromised the stability of two free sides of the outer ring. The earthquake had particularly worsened the situation of the third ring on the western side, where, due to the dangerously unstable blocks, an emergency intervention was required. Raphael Stern was entrusted with the consolidation works and constructed a brick spur to serve as a buttress. The first two arches of each order were filled in, and the rustic spur was built without the architectural forms of the existing arches due to the urgency and the need for a quick and economical intervention. The blocks of the filled arches were locked in a place just before they collapsed, testifying to the emergency intervention and showing how a masonry structure with arches collapses when the lateral truss exerted by the arch does not find the counter truss of the collapsed arches from previous centuries, and therefore tends to open up, causing the central block, called the keystone of the arch, to slide. Giuseppe Balladier took charge of restoring the perimeter ring on the upside side toward the Forum in 1823. The substantial difference between Stern's and Valadier's restoration approaches is that while the former was carried out under the threat of imminent collapse, the latter could be executed calmly. From a structural perspective, the intervention involved a new buttress, but constructed with arches identical to the original ones. The addition, entirely in bricks, was built using different materials than the original for economic reasons, rather than a deliberate choice for differentiation, except for the bases and capitals, in Travertino, which were installed exactly like the originals and with the same level of the tail. Similarly, to preserve the aesthetic harmony with the pre-existing structure, a travertine-colored plaster was designed although it was never actually applied. During the pontificate of Gregorio XVI, missing parts of the third ring in the southern sector were reconstructed. In 1852, the archaeologist and architect Luigi Canina reconstructed a section of the top level. Parts of the Colosseum's surrounding area were excavated in the late 19th to early 20th century, during the modern urbanization of the Esquilino Hill. Later, the arena floor was removed, rendering the monument unusable for any kind of spectacle. With the creation of Via dell'Impero in the 1930s, the monument's fate was to become a grand traffic divider. During the same period, the Meta Sudans, the rest of a great fountain from Roman period, also disappeared, sacrificed for a clear view of the Colosseum perfectly aligned with the Via dell'Impero from Circus Maximus. In 2011, significant restoration works began on the Colosseum, and since 2022, archaeological excavations have been ongoing, focusing on the southern sector of the amphitheater, including the two collapsed ambulatories. Please don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel, comment the video, and hit the notification bell, so you won't miss any future uploads.